Uh, good evening, TC, and welcome on to our weekly podcast, Terry Curran's The Current View with the Isle of Hillsborough, Mr. Terry Curran. And if you're listening free to the first half on either Acast or Spotify, you can follow the links on our socials and access the full podcast via either Apple or become a Patreon, all the W all the W's dot patreon.com forward slash SRB Media. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Curran View or on Facebook, The Current View, or join the group, which is over 3,000 members strong now. Thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Steady away. Yeah, steady away, as you used to say every week, uh, when you wanted to speak to me. But uh, I am steady away this moment in time, but we are getting back to a little bit of normality. Hopefully we will get there, TC, to total normality. In 1974, the Dutch played total football and we saw some total bits of genius the weekend from our Magic Moments section. So what have you sourced for us this week, sir? Again, as usual, we both repeat ourselves on certain things and I'm repeating myself every week like, like I do. There's that many great goals scored in all four leagues. Uh, it's unbelievable. But I'm going for, I mean, Newcastle is a transformation. I mean, for the last, what, five, six seasons, maybe seven, eight seasons, I've always been in and around near the relegation zone. But obviously new owners, uh, new manager in Eddie Howe, different philosophy. Um, I thought the performance itself was terrific against Tottenham, who are a more, uh, look, a more meaningful side this season. But they're going to push, push, push one or two teams uh, hard, but maybe they won't have the strength in depth looking at him now. Yeah. But I've gone for two. I've gone for, they're both in the same game. Wilson's goal, and I don't. Uh, it wasn't a foul because the goalkeeper no. knew what he was doing. He got himself in a tiz was got himself in a right mess, uh, and Wilson kept his cool to uh, chip the goalkeeper. So I thought that was a terrific goal. But transformation, like I tell you all, new managers come in uh, and fetch different players into the team, and Eddie Howe has transformed uh, Almer. And his, the second goal, his goal in that game, I thought was a terrific individual goal. Uh, it looks a different player altogether. And that's the difference. You know, uh, Eddie Howe is, is Almiron's game. And we wanted two players who uh, Eddie Howe's left out is their loss. So th- that's what football is. And I always tell my two sons, doesn't mean someone's a bad player if he's not playing. It means that that manager does not fancy him. And that is a fact. Whatever one says, that is a fact. Absolutely. Um, I think Jack Grealish can take a little bit of credit for Almiron's form because at the end of last season he did say that take Mares off, he's playing like Almiron. And since this season started, Almiron's been absolutely on fire. He scored a, a couple of worldies so far this season. I've always thought that he looks a player. Newcastle, as you rightly say, Eddie Howe has transformed Newcastle. They're playing on the front foot. They're playing with confidence. And one of my customers is a big Newcastle uh, supporter uh, from up there in Geordieland, moved down to Birmingham many, many years ago. And I did say to him, I said, Dale, a number of these players that are playing for you now were playing for you under Steve Bruce. But the thing is, Eddie Howe has got performances out of the players and Newcastle have played with a different, different philosophy, and that's been the difference for me. Different philosophy. Yeah. Uh, what did I say to you about a couple of years ago? Absolutely. What's the point? Yeah. What's the point in going to play for Newcastle as a striker? Yeah. Just be spending all your time in your own half. Hmm. We've what said goal, that. Keep, what yeah. goal scorer is there for? Scoring goals. Score goals. Yeah, and that's what they do. Even doing. the score goals playing in your own half of the field. Or in the opposition's half of the field. Absolutely, it's a no-brainer, you know, isn't it? And majority under Bruce, and I'm not being funny to Bruce because I like him as a person. Absolutely, him, yeah. You know, but he, you know, if I went to watch New uh, Sheffield Wednesday play, uh, Bruce up manager, and Martin O'Neill was the manager of Forest. Both played yeah. with two absolutely world money, world class managers. I remember you saying this. Terrific football, mm. and I tell you what. I looked at it and I'm th- I said to myself, and I said to John Brindley, if Clough and Ferguson were at this match, they'd walk out. And I finished up walking out. Well, I didn't walk out. I went and sat in the, because I was in a box, direct, not in the director's box, in a, 
um, one of those boxers, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I went and watched results in, 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 in one of those boxers. I, you know, I just thought to myself, I can't believe it, you know. And I love Sheffield Wednesday, you know. Uh, end of the day, it doesn't make, make a difference how you play as long as you win. But you know when you're not winning and you play that type of football? Yeah. It's so poor. So going back to what I was saying about Newcastle, what's the point of signing for Newcastle as a striker? You know, uh, he looks a different player this, this year, Joe Linton. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He looks a totally different yeah. player. Different philosophy, mm. different confidence because, of, you know, players do have to have some form of freedom, but they've got to have discipline when they haven't got the ball. Mm. And they've got to be aware when they haven't got the ball. I think they've worked out that Joe Linton isn't a forward as well, which um, you know most Newcastle fans could have told you. They've dropped him down into midfield, and he's been an absolute revelation. But again, I go back to the philosophy of Newcastle is completely different. It's not just the owners that that they always had a problem with Mike Ashley. They didn't particularly have a problem with. Uh, Benitez, who I thought was equally as bad as Bruce in his approach to, to the way that Newcastle no, lined Liverpool up. Fans love them, don't they? I, I, mean, I just Newcastle don't get fans love yeah. them. I, I, I don't see it. I don't no, know I what don't. I'm missing with it being. I know. P- perhaps it's just me being, being stupid, not understanding the game, but I just cannot understand for the life of me the smoke blown up the backside of, um, of Benitez. I think he's a very, very average football manager and uh, when when there was speculation of the vacancy at Aston Villa you get the usual mooted around and Benitez was one of them I thought they ain't going to like that if Benitez goes Unai Emery has gone in and I think yeah good luck to uh, to Emery and let's hope that he can play football on the front foot he, he did with, with Arsenal things didn't really work out for him at Arsenal but I, I, think, I don't think he finished any lower than sixth but, but again it's down to the managers and the managers' philosophy and and Eddie Howe, for me, I mean we're now October going into I, November. I throw, I, he is manager of the year for me, Eddie Howe. I will throw this in. Yeah. Um, that manager has got to be strong enough to tell that football club, or those not the club, so it's, yeah. not, it's never the club's fault. The, the club's the club. The yeah. club will always be there when the fans have gone. Yep. When the owners have gone, when the players have gone, that club will always be there. Of course it will. You know, because uh, the planet's not going to be uh, evaporated in 12 years' time. Yeah. That club will always be there. Yeah. The manager's got to be strong enough to say to the owner, listen, you've employed me to run this team. If this team is not doing well, and it's not doing well uh, that we're losing fans, sack me. Yeah. Other than that, stay out of it. Come and enjoy the game, and I'll bring you success. Absolutely. They, these are millionaires, these guys. Yeah, yeah. Billionaires you know, now. Yeah. How much money do they want? You know, it ain't all about attacking. You've got to be able to defend. But what I'm trying to say is, you hear that many rumours that everybody interferes. Well, yeah. a good manager, Pep won't let anybody interfere. No. Nah. And that's the difference. Absolutely. Great managers don't, as you've always said, TC... Great managers don't fear, fear. Um, my magic moments, I thought Tillman's goal for Leicester against Wolves was was quite incredible. I like Kai Havertz's goal last night for, yeah. uh, for Chelsea. I love them shots where they hit the bar and go in. It just looks more spectacular, don't they it? Could have been, they could have been five or six up for stuff. Yeah, they could have, yeah. Again, doing a good job, isn't he? Um, Graham yeah. Potter. Chelsea playing on the front foot. He's put some of the kids in there. He's got that philosophy. He he, he exudes confidence. He's done very well at Brighton. And he's, uh, he's carrying it on at Chelsea. And good luck to him. I thought Everton's performance was fabulous from what I saw on Match of the Day and the little bit of highlights. Uh, you identified who it would be the other week with a, a magic moment. And I thought that that assist for the, um, for the second goal was or oh, sorry, was it the third Great goal ball. was phenomenal and and Everton just played. I looked at that and I thought 
Blimey, Super Frank has got Everton playing like Brazil. And Anthony Gordon's goal. I mean, how that linesman had got his flag up, I do not know. But that was a fabulous team goal, starting in the right-back position. And they just pass, pass, pass and moved. And I thought that was the best I'd seen Everton play, probably TC, since the uh, days that you played for them in the 80s. Well, if people are honest with themselves, Mm -hmm. you know, we we know Everton's never going to compete to win the league at this moment in time. No. But you've got to give a manager at least three years at the football club, unless, yeah. unless, you know, uh, you can see that there's no improvement at all. But in general, you know, Pop took three years. They look a different team this last couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, and they look as though they're playing for Frank, and that's that's a big plus when you get the team playing for yeah uh, for the, for the manager. And yes, he looks as though he's a lot happier, Frank. The, the, te- the te- team looks a lot happier. Obviously, the fans only want to see a winning team. So when your team is winning, and when you put a performance in like they did, like you've just said, because yeah. it was a great performance, yeah. then uh, it's, an happy, it's an happy group of players. It's an happy, it's an happy uh, club. And it's an happy group of fans. Yeah. And that's what everybody strives for. But... The simple thing of it all is there's only one team can win the FA Cup, the only one team can win the League Cup, and there's only one team can win the Premier League. Yeah. And that goes right down into the second, Championship 1 and Championship 2. I mean, none of them can win the FA Cup. It will be a miracle if that ever happens. Yeah. You know, but in general, I mean, half the teams don't even play a strong team now in the FA Cup, so... Yes, it, the performance itself was as good as I've seen for a long time by Everton. Absolutely, and Palace are no slouches. Palace was still in the game. I like to watch Palace. I should be watching more of Everton because I think they've got some fine players playing with a great confidence. I like Frank Lampard. I like Patrick Vieira, the way that he's lining up Crystal Palace. So um, it's it's looking good. I love to see young managers coming through and producing good stuff. Absolutely. 100%, 100%. Yeah. You know, if you want to be successful, yeah. you've got to take a risk. You've got to, you've got to coach outside the box. You've mm. got to play outside the box. But you've got to understand the importance of not having a ball. Absolutely, TC. And you mentioned that there's only one club that can win the FA Cup, one club that can win the League Cup, one club that can win the Premier League. But I think there's a number of clubs that could win the Champions League. Barcelona have been knocked out no, but, and Juventus I mean have been is, knocked out. But uh, what I mean by that... Yeah. Yeah, the Premier, the Premier League, there's, there's, there's three or four people with chances of winning it. But what I'm trying to say, at the end of the day, Liverpool try and win it, Chelsea try and win it, Man United try and win it, but if City win it... Yeah, City will. You know, everybody's got to look at the situation. There's only one team can win a trophy. Absolutely. And there's 90... Well, there's... There's 92 clubs in, in our league, mm. but there's what is it, 22 in one in, in the championship and eight, 18 in the Premier League? There's 20, in, 20 in the, 20 I've in the Premier League. Yeah. The, 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 the Champions League. Mm. Once you get to the quarterfinals, semi finals, then anyone can win it because they've all, they've all got good teams, all got good teams with great players. With On that day, they can beat anyone. Absolutely. And my magic moment this week's been Lionel Messi. I've seen a couple of his goals this week. I mean, that one goal that he scored. That one with that one with it was, and Messi. That was just, it was just filth, wasn't it? It was just filth on tap. When you've got three well, players playing and passing and moving like were that, that was brilliant. That was showboating. It's fantastic, wasn't it? On and, a major yacht. Yeah, and he just sat the goalkeeper down, didn't he? And then he just stuck it in the bag. Just like, you know, that's what you watch football for, isn't it? Well, certainly that's what I watch football to see magic moments and players that can produce that. So, so you know, well when done. I, when you're on a football field, I yeah. mean, I've not played against Messi, but I've played against some great players in my, in my time. Mm. And you see some of the things they do, even as a player, you think, wow. Yeah. You know what it feels? You mm. went, wow, it's mm. unreal, that. And like you said, to watch that, it was it was breathtaking. Absolute pure filth. So well done, Lionel Messi, one of the greatest players that's ever walked the planet. Um, 
I posted up or texted you uh, a picture yesterday with you and uh, Alistair Roberts, and I'm I'm going to be doing a, a, a my well not my seventies a Legends of the Seventies podcast. Yeah, I was I at saw a villa, it, by yeah. the way. I, I saw it by the way, and I hope you notice and remind Ali. I'm going to say this, yeah. Three, there were three defenders there. There's, all trying to stop me. But there's always, whenever I've posted, and that's what I was going to say, whenever I post a picture up of Terry Curran or I send it to you, there's always two or three players around you trying to get the ball. They don't just double up on you. They treble up. And in some instances, CC, I've seen pictures and there's four and five players around you. I don't, I don't, I don't uh, regret anything. So, you know, mm-hmm. but it will never... I'll, it'll never stand instead for me by not playing in the old first division. You can't say Premier League because it yep. was the old first division in those mm. days. Better but league. whoever I, get, I played against, it never bothered me. Mm. And whether mm. I played in first division, it weren't long enough. Or whether I played in any other, other divisions, there I had always, always. They, the players used to say to me, the managers told us, we've got to double up on you. We've mm. got to double up on you. Yeah. You know, so uh, whoever I played for or against, they did it even in training, Gavin. Mm. They did it even in training. And again, in my day, we got kicked from pillar to post. Yes, you did. And and Ali would have kicked you from pillar to post, wouldn't he? Oh, I mean... Ali did, by the way. <laughs> they were a good team, weren't they? You've yeah. always said that about I will the say this, Derek, Derek Statham, uh, he never really, a couple of times, but not in the sense like where some players really tried to injure you, you know what I mean? He never got that close to you, though, did he, Del Boy? Well, it was a good player. He was a good player. And you're right, you know. But I know, I know, uh, Gabby Owen and the other lads have always told me that um, he used to be petrified when he played against. He he hated it because I would run at him whether I lost the ball or not. Yeah. And I I would quit. Yeah. And there's no the worst for the defender when they forget Terry Kevin. There's no the worst. I've always said to you, Mm. when they, you hear these experts on television turning around and saying, uh, bad defending. Well, let me. When somebody's running at someone, and they just that faint and drop the shoulder a little bit, yeah. that can throw you off a of balance. Yeah. Shows how good you are. That can just throw you off a of balance. And and a, and a killer pass, you know, between the lines, can put a good defender's out of game. And that, what you've got, to, what if you're going to be a good coach, what you've got to look at is, it's not the defending; it's stopping the pass getting through. Yep. And it's stopping that player getting the ball in dangerous areas. What's going to run it? Absolutely. I remember Big Ron telling me that he sat up all night um, once with Malcolm Allison. They were having a debate who was the better left back, Derek Statham or Kenny Sanson. And Big Ron said to me, he valued Ken, um, not Kenny, he valued um, Derek Statham as the greatest left back in the world at, at that present moment in time. He said he was that good, he was phenomenal. But they uh, they had a great back four, didn't they? Robertson, Weil. Um, they had a great team. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they had, you know, they had two good, they had two great teams. Yeah, know? they did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, unfortunate not to, unfortunate not to win. Uh, Old First Division, because that... Um, it was the freeze, wasn't it, of uh, 1978, uh, the, the winter 78, 79? Set the forward. Cyril Regis. Cyril Regis, Laurie Cunningham, you know, that Len Cantello. When, you know, Cunningham, Regis, uh, the Scottish lad, um, Johnson. And Willie Johnson, Johnson yeah, yeah, Willie Johnson. Willie Johnson. Willie Johnson. Yeah, and, then they, and, then, and then, what they call the other kid, uh, Man City, Owen and um, Barnes. You know, they had some great players. Yeah, they they, 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 they had two they, yeah. great teams. He built two great teams, he John. Yeah, he did. But again, that original one. There's a book, actually. I've just ordered the book. It's called Attack, Attack. And it's the story of the 1978-79 uh, season. And Ron said to me, had it not a frozen and, and, and it would have been a normal... Uh, season like like what we see these days too. I know we're having the break for the World Cup, but ordinarily you don't get games called off like you used to. I don't think Albion had the undersoil eating. Liverpool did. Liverpool played those games while the Albion didn't play, and then Albion had to play catch up, and it literally did catch up on the baggies. And as a consequence, I think finished third that season, and Liverpool ran out winners. But that that season and that team, West Bromwich Albion, you know. 
they when people talk about Neely men and, and teams that actually didn't win honours and I was listening to, to Ali and he was saying that we didn't win as much as what really we should have with that team. There were a lot of great teams about in them days. He needed but a the bit baggies of luck. were brilliant. Yeah, they he were needed brilliant. A bit of luck. QPR had a great team up, Absolutely, you know? yeah. Again, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you just need that little bit of luck, don't mm. you? I mean, Newcastle, yeah. you can say, well, bad luck. It is not bad luck. Uh, not bad luck. I'm not trying to word for. They, they could blame the manager. What they want to do yeah, when they were bad management, time. yeah. But sometimes you just need one one goal to go in, one yeah. ball to, to, to drop the right way for you. Yeah. And it gets you going again, doesn't it? Absolutely. You so, know, uh, so just... and you've got to be able to handle the pressure. Because what I mean by pressure mm. is the media. Uh, or, you know, they've never won it before. Uh, can they handle that? You've got to put all that. Good managers get get that away from the players. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. But in the 70s, in those then 10 years, in that decade of the 70s, we had a number of teams vying to be top dogs. And just because some of them didn't win the FA Cup, they didn't win the League Cup, they didn't win the First Division Championship, they were fantastic sides. We, uh, we were absolutely blessed. We're going to go back to the 70s now. Uh, substitutions, Ronaldo um, being... Well, walking out, we don't really know what's gone on, what went on. We know that the fallout, there was so tell you, videos, you know etc. You know what? I'll tell you what. When I said, this is what happens it, on a bench. Yep. We're, we're talking now of a superstar. Yep. Right? Who wanted to leave before the season started. Yep. He didn't even come to train. If that had been a good player, yep. they'd have bombed him out. Yep. That's first and foremost. Mm-hmm. He's not playing the games he wants to play. So the frustration now comes in. Nowadays, the point players on with two minutes to go. But what's the point? So the 2-0 two nil, the two nil against Tottenham the other week. Yeah. And he puts Nat Ronaldo on on the 87th minute. Yeah. Now, Ronaldo, and he's got all, what all he's got, and he should be able to look at that and think, well, you know, he's coming to an age where he's just said, do I need this anymore? Because if he wants to play, he's not going to be able to play every game. You know it and I know it. 100%. So then, he's sat on a bench. Uh, he's probably not coming on. Or they, or they said to him, uh, get warmed up, you're going on. And he's walked off. Now, for me, I've done it. It's childish. Mm. But I'm telling you, that's what it is. It's just a frustration and anger uh, and not being out there when the team's winning or losing, where you try, you think you think you can help them, yeah, you know. Well, the manager does maybe not think it, 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 it could, but that's his opinion and that's his prerogative, and he's the manager and he picks mm. the team. So I'm just trying to explain to the fans, 100 percent, he should not have done it, and I've done it, I've done it. Not walk down the pitch, but refuse to come on, yeah, right, uh, and it's wrong, it's wrong. Because the older you get. You know, don't forget you're still kids. But these days, they're playing in front of millions of people. He's got a big fan following. Uh, and there'll be a lot of people telling him the manager is treating you like, mm. I'm going to say shit. That's what, yeah. that's close friend. They're not good friends then. Mm. Because it winds you up and that's what happens. So uh, if, if, if I can get, if I'm trying to make it easy for the fans to understand, and I'm like them, I, I'm condoning it, but is frustrated that he wants to play and he should be man enough. But he's a, he's a footballer. We, we all make mistakes. Absolutely. But, you, you know, you come on when you were 4-1 down at Leeds United when you were playing for Southampton. You know, what did McMenemy expect you to do? What did Ten Hag <laughs> expect Ronaldo to do with three minutes to go? Why said. did he bother? I can tell what Big Man you said to me. <laughs> Go and change the game before before one down. What minute was it when McMenemy asked you to come to, come on at four one down? It must have been late on in the game, too. I think there's about ten minutes to go. Just, I mean, how stupid is so that? So I, I put like I told you all. I've told you all yeah. before. I trapped the ball with my knee, 
and I've gone to the full back Eddie Gray, not Eddie Gray, Frankie Gray. Come, I think it was Frankie, whoever it was. Yes, come and get the ball. The fans are going by me. At first they laughed and they were going by me. And then McManny me asked, well, I changed the game, didn't I? <laughs> but did something different. Ball, he went mad with McManny me. He said, it's not his fault. You know, but you, you see, you're frustrated because you're not, you know, you're not, you're not playing. But again, I just think that's bad management. But, you know, I mean, again, the manager, he's the manager. I get all of that. But I just think there's times to say to a player, what's the point? There ain't no point. 4-1 down. So you're starting next week. Um, there's the no about, point in bringing about, it on now, son. Look, and I'm older now. The thing mm. about all that, there's other players coming through. And if one player does it, that's why the elite managers... I get that. that. I, I think 100% manager, I get you, that. But I think this manager's handled it quite well, mate. I 100% understand that. But I think that the manager diffuses that situation. He doesn't need that situation. So he says to Terry Curran, so we're 4-1 down. Um, you got, there's no point in you going on for the last 10 minutes. The same as Ronaldo. We're 2-0 up. Don't bother. You're starting next week. Diffuse the situation. Take it away. And yet, we're going to catch yeah, but up the with managers, the... What I'm trying to get through to you, the manager's yeah. frustrated because they get me beat. Ronaldo was a superstar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't diffuse it. No, but what I'm saying is, at 4-1 down, you've got no chance of changing the damn game. And at 2-0 up, there's no point in putting what I, what I, what I What I did was, just, just, I went on then to show people, yeah. watch me, I can play. Absolutely. I'll, I'll, uh, Ronaldo doesn't need to do that anymore, does he? No, no, not at all. I no. mean, the only way you're going to defuse that is by not having him on bench. Yeah, or not bothering to say to him with three minutes to go, Get stripped off, son. You're coming on. I just didn't see the point, personally. But we're going to yep. catch up with uh, Alan Hudson because I had a chat with Uddy. He had a situation in 1978 when Terry Neal said to him, Uddy, you're coming on. So we're going to listen to Uddy's account of that. But first, we're going to be uh, talking about that Ronaldo situation with Alan Hudson. <laughs> Morning, mate. Mr. Hudson, how are you? Topic of the week again. Last week it was the sober tent, which down, which went down very well. Uh, yeah. th this week we're going to be talking about substitutes. Ronaldo refusing to go on, walk down the tunnel. We've, we've seen and heard the fallout. What I haven't heard, though, Al, is nobody has asked Ten Hag, at what moment did you ask Ronaldo to go on? If it was three, maybe four minutes to go, why did you ask one of the world's greatest players to go on with a short amount of time left to play? Do you not find that insulting to Ronaldo? And did you do it because you wanted a reaction from Ronaldo and you got it? What's your take on it? Well, yeah, I, um, the only way it, your initial thought is ridiculous. Uh and then you try to weigh it up and you think that he might have had an ulterior motive to see how Ronaldo would um, respond. Yeah. And that was his response. And maybe that was a response that Ben Hag wanted. Yeah. Um, to give him an excuse to get him out of the club. Um, but it it was, in my, in my eyes, so very disrespectful. It was incredible. It was scare. It was it was a scary moment. It was a sad moment, uh, and um, you don't want to see such a fantastic footballer and what he's given to the game and all over the world um, end a career in such a way. And it's that that's what management can do to to players. We've always spoke about manage, management can break, make or break you yeah, and. It leaves a very sour taste in your mouth to to see that happen. It was very sad. It was a, it was sad to walk him, see him walk away like he did. Uh, and it's very sad that the fans, uh, if they do have a have a backlash and respond badly towards him, I think it, that would be even sadder because he's he's been nothing but fantastic since he's been back. Absolutely. I just again, I'd like to ask uh, Tenag those two questions, and then I'd like to ask him. So, what did you what did you expect if Ronaldo would have come on? 
with a few minutes to go, what do you, you were already 2-0 up, so he ain't going to change no game. With three or four minutes to go, you've got absolutely no chance. He may have had two, maybe three touches. So, you know, what was your, your expectations of Ronaldo and why did you do it? And I keep looking at that and asking this, the same question to myself. And the only answer I can come up with is that he wanted the reaction from Ronaldo to say, right, I now want him out of this football club. After the World Cup, he's gone. He'll never play for me again. I just think that that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah, you were, I mean, well, there's one thing we don't know. It's like when I I was at Arsenal and, you know, and at Chelsea, uh, the fans, supporters don't know what goes behind, on behind the scenes, how how you're getting on with the manager, how, the, how you respond to uh, managers' decisions. Um, a Serbian.